We are at Bee Tree Park. I am doing the St. Louis County Parks 30 for 30. It's number 19 on the list, so I just used a little punch to punch our cards. And now we're gonna get ready to walk. So we are at Bee Tree Park, um, St. Louis County. It is wet. As you can see, I got my paper wet already. Um, and so it's a big loop around the lake. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this trail though, because it's wet and it runs along parallel to that trail that's more wet than this trail. So anyway, Bee Tree Park is one of our favorite parks. Um, my husband used to live near here. And so when we were dating, we would come here all the time. We had our engagement photos here. Do you remember that, honey? And um, our engagement photo shoot was here. A lot of people do photo shoots here. And I think we've collected persimmons here before because there's a persimmon tree up here. Uh, it's just, it's been a couple years since we've been here. But, and we've done the 30 for 30 program before. It's been going on for, I don't know, I'm just gonna guess about 10 years now. We did it the first year and we're gonna do it again this year. And this is the Mississippi River right here. And if you hear that noise, it's a barge. Barge traffic. So I think one of these was a persimmon tree. You remember that, Robert? So this is the first place we used to collect persimmons. I found a place closer to home with a lot more. I'm not gonna be able to see it. Yeah, you used to have a full view of the river both ways. All the trees are blocking the view. Mm. And the, I, the river is way up. Yeah. Uh, we're not experiencing like bad flooding like other states right now. Like Texas has got really bad flooding, but there are flooding in certain areas in Missouri. And they're telling people not to boat right now on the Mississippi because it's too dangerous. And where my sister lives, uh, the river near her is has almost flooded over a bridge. So yeah, she was gonna send me pictures last night, but she hasn't yet. The Merrimack. Yeah, it seems to be flood prone area. Anyway, I'm just gonna do short clips on this trial because otherwise it'd be like a 30 minute video at least. I'm just gonna do the highlights. But yeah, this is one of our favorite hikes. So if you do the 30 for 30, definitely recommend this one uh, as, you know, haunted? Haunted. I don't, why do you say it's haunted? Well, I mean, some haunted people come here because there's, there's on Union Electric property, there's a, an unfinished castle, like it's a house that kind of looks like a castle, but it's mm. unfinished, and people go there to visit it. Do you're gonna you're probably gonna get the cops called on you because because it's not allowed. Yeah, and I don't know if they put sensors on the fences anymore, but yeah, you have to climb a huge fence too. That's interesting. I did not know that. Yep. I don't really know the history of it though. I guess I should. So it has been at least four or five years since we've been here. This is the road that goes straight away. This is new. It used to not be blocked off. So if you were to go straight, you'd go past the haunted area that Robert was talking about. We're, we're taking the loop, so we're going to the right. But yeah, that was not, you used to be able to walk down it, no problem. And then on the other side of this wooded area is Sherwood Country Club, which has a golf course. And the golf course butts up to the area right there. And so you can find golf balls in that area we have we used to walk through it and collect golf balls because you know the golfers would shoot them in the woods and not want to go chasing after them so if you're into collecting golf balls spoiler alert this is a place where you can go to get free golf balls um, but definitely bring some bug spray and tick repellent um, but I don't care about golf balls anymore. I used to work for a company that worked with golf courses. And so I'd, get, I'd collect the golf balls for my fellow employees. But I don't do that anymore, so I don't care. 
And now this is the second part of the loop. I mean, it's one big loop, but a loop is also kind of like a square. So now we're at the top of the loop, heading towards the lake. So yeah, it was interesting that Robert was telling me about the haunted area and now it's blocked off because, you know, with the popularity of ghost hunting shows and everyone thinks they're an amateur ghost hunter, <laughs> I'm sure they have a lot more trespassers sure. than they used to. Yeah, because you, you, you've always had trespassers, but now everyone wants to be you know, reviewed. So. Yep, be their own ghost but hunter. So close, they knocked a lot of trees down. It's very close to Union Electric, so or Amor and UE. And then that's also a popular path for, like, the dirt bikers. Like, not not the motor bicycle. What do you call it? Mountain bikers. Mountain bikers. Yeah. So they're, you know, if you're into mountain biking, which Robert used to be, that would be, like, a perfect trail to go mountain biking for Missouri because we really don't have mountains. We do. Well, yeah, but not like Colorado. Well, well, they you're like right, you're right. When you're, when you're riding a mountain bike, it seems like a, a mountain. You're right, you're right. It just keeps going. It's like. Well, when I think know, mountains, I think snow covered caps. But you're right, we, we do have our own respectable mountains. We do, we do. The smaller than these. Yeah. Alright, we're now on the trail part that goes around the pond. Would you call this a pond or a lake? I call it a pond, but a it, pond. it is a lake. They so, lake, what's. Do they have. Yeah. They have a. Air, it, the water. They have an irrigation system. They not? used to not, but they, they do not. It's not called irrigation. What do you call that? I don't know what that is. Air, aeration? Aerator? Yeah, I don't know. So, the water doesn't go stagnant. So. I see one, two, three. There's a guy over there. So it, at least four guys fishing. So Robert has fished here before. You, there is like a, a sign back there that says like what you can keep and what the limit is. Robert's more of a catch and release type of guy. Um, but he said he's caught a couple nice sized bass in here before. I did, I did. So there's fish in here. I think they stock it now. They used to not stock it. Fish. There's definitely fish in here. Just gotta come at the right time of the day. And there's another guy right there. So every time we've been here, there's always been someone fishing. There's another aerator over there too. I don't know if I'm using the right word, but some kind of <laughs> filtration system that keeps the water moving so the algae doesn't really have a chance to start blooming in stagnant water. Our lake in our subdivision does that too. I don't know if it's just a Missouri thing or if a lot of places do that, but it's, it's otherwise if the water starts to become stagnant. This is a gate. No. No, it's just like a watch out for the drainage system. Runoff dam. Usually it's dry, so. All right, so Robert was just talking that he's 99% sure they're stocking this. Like, we just walked past the guy who just caught a nice sized catfish. So that's pretty cool. And during the winter months, like, there is like, I don't, I'm not, you're gonna have to do your own research if you're interested and you're in St. Louis. But there's a phone line where you can call to get when they restock the lakes that are part of the county park system. But if you're into that, you probably already know that and you can do your own research. But it is pretty cool. Trout, the, yeah, for, for trout fishing, it's pretty neat. For, for trout fishing, yeah. Because we used to not have trout fishing here. So, no swimming in this. I don't know what anyone would want to because. People have done it. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's a good thing that there's no smell of vision because it is very stinky right now. <laughs> very stinky. All right, we're at the almost at the end of the pond section, and there's a dock right here. We do not remember there being a dock last time. So that's newer. It might have been. I don't know. I might have been. And then we just saw a guy catch bass. So it's like 1 p.m. Yeah. So to be catching fish in the afternoon in the weather like this impressive. is impressive. So they're definitely stocking it. I know fish, Robert's wishing he would have brought his fishing pole right now. I know you are. <laughs> it's like we might be coming back next weekend. kind of wild. Here yeah. it was wild, it would just run over into different areas. So they, they fixed all that. Yeah, they definitely bushwhack it a lot. It's not as overrun. Yeah, because it was and it was wild. 
Lots of fishing opportunities. There's some porta potties right here. They actually do have an, a regular restroom at the top of, when you enter into the park. So it's interesting to see them having porta potties right here. There used to be actually a building down there. There was? I don't remember. Hmm. I thought there was like not a big building, but something small. Maybe I don't know. Well, anyway, for a Monday afternoon, there's a lot of people fishing, which I think is cool. And then um, Rob was, you know, was talking about earlier about how they definitely clean up the brush around the lake. So there's definitely a couple spots where a truck can stock the, the pond with fish. So it's pretty cool. Now we're almost, this is the last part of the loop. Heading back up towards the restrooms, towards the entrance of the park. And if I sound out of shape, it's because I am totally out of shape. <laughs> but I'm gonna get back in shape. Summer goals to get back in shape. Not sound like I'm out of breath every time I go hiking. All right, we're at close to the entrance of the park. Here's that little building. I thought it was restrooms. Is this restrooms? And then, I don't know if you can see it, but right there is a um, old historic house that is now like you can rent it out for parties and banquets and stuff. Oh, man, What's gone? What did you think was here? There used to be a fountain right here. Um, a water fountain? Water fountain. It was like the, the kind of the pump. Yeah. And I filled my water bottles here whenever right. I was riding my bike. Oh, that's too bad. And yeah. look at these beautiful purple flowers. I don't know what these are, but they're beautiful. They did not remove the water pump Robert was talking about. Yeah, I was wrong. They turned it into a water fountain over here. Yeah. This is the water pump that's now a water fountain. Yeah, it used to be different than that, though. That I know for a fact because you had to pump it with your oh, I remember those old time pumps. <laughs> they like flow out fast. They always like, overrun like wet. And this is pretty much it. At our car, on the other side of our car, is the trailhead where we started. There was two cars when we arrived. Now there's six. Very popular park. This place is the barbecue, or there used to be barbecue spots around here. You mean like you could, I mean, there are several picnic tables. You mean like a grill? Yeah, there's a grill. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, lots of picnic spots. So yeah. yeah, if you wanted to have a picnic. And back there, there used to be more. I don't know if there's still There's a pavilion. It's there a was a pavilion back there that we didn't show. Oh, I see a lady in a beautiful dress. So someone's doing a photo shoot. Yeah. So yeah, it's a great park for photo shoots. Very quiet, too. Yeah. Is it a, I don't think it's a wedding dress. There's a lot of, it's May. So all the proms going on in St. Louis you know there's like 50 high schools so lots of problems my niece's prom was last weekend they went to what park did they go to can't remember I mean St. Louis has like over 30 parks plenty of beautiful parks for photo shoots so yeah this is the end of it one of our favorite hiking trails